Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Paul, and welcome to our videos at www.usmlevideos.net. Please take some time today to visit our website. You're always welcome to browse through hundreds of USMLE videos we have already posted. You're also welcome to comment on our videos. Tonight I want to discuss a few minutes about NASH, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. A very, very commonly tested topic in USMLE examination. So let us see the most important points from this disease. We all know that ethanol, alcohol, causes fatty liver. Ethanol is converted into acetaldehyde through the action of alcohol dehydrogenase. And as alcohol dehydrogenase converts this product, alcohol, into acetaldehyde, there is a lot of NADH formed in this reaction. So this NADH is dangerous to the body. How? Because as fatty acids want to join the respiratory chain, these NADH actually compete with the reducing equivalents of fatty acids for respiratory chain. So those fatty acids are left behind and they form triacylglycerol and they deposits in the liver and cause fatty liver. So basically that is the mechanism for fatty acid, sorry, fatty liver formation through alcohol. Now alcohol is not the only cause for fatty liver. That's why that's why we call this NASH, NASH non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. Non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, I would say NASH from now onwards for brevity. And NASH is very common in metabolic syndrome, dyslipidemia, and uh, diabetes mellitus. And also even in patients who undergo ileal jejunal biopsy surgery. Now, NASH is associated with metabolic syndrome in most of the patients. You need to remember this. And remember this abbreviation, this mnemonic in fact, DROP, DROP, D for dyslipidemia, R for resistance, insulin resistance, O for obesity, and P for pressure, that is hypertension. So drop dyslipidemia, abnormal lipids, and uh, insulin resistance, obesity, hypertension, they form metabolic syndrome, and metabolic syndrome is a fertile ground for NASH. Because of the most of the fat that comes through the diet, it rapidly accumulates in the liver. And now let us see what is the pathophysiology for this. Reduced mitochondrial oxidation of fatty acids, increased synthesis of fatty acids to hepatocytes, and reduced removal of triglycerides from hepatocytes. As I said, the most common association of NASH is metabolic syndrome. After that, obesity, protein calorie malnutrition, total parenteral nutrition, medications like amiodarone, tamoxifen, glucocorticoids, tetracyclines, methotrexate, thallium, metabolic disorders like Wilson's disease, Weber-Christian disease, Refsum disease, glycogen storage disease, they cause NASH. So non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, it is uh, one of the most common liver disease. In fact, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is going to affect I mean, almost 50% of people in Western societies because this is uh, the obesity is becoming a big problem in these nations. Now, signs and symptoms. Patients many times may not reveal any kind of problems with it, but some patients, they report fatigue and upper right quadrant pain 
and uh, persistent uh, malice. Then when this uh, Nash progresses, it causes cirrhosis. Remember, Nash is not a benign condition. Steatosis is. But Nash is not a benign condition. It causes inflammation. And this inflammation causes fibrosis in the liver. And that fibrosis ultimately leads to cirrhosis. So what do you expect in this condition? This is, uh, let us start with investigations, blood tests. AST and ALT are elevated. You remember alcohol, it elevates AST more than ALT. That's why in alcoholic fatty liver, AST, ALT ratio is more than one. And it is less than one in NASH. So that is a very important point right there. What is the difference between NASH and alcoholic statuses in terms of AST and ALT. The ratio is more than one in alcoholic fatty liver, whereas less than one in a NASH. Now let us uh, see the lipid profile. Hyperlipidemia, triglycerides are elevated, ferritin is raised, there will be, some, in some cases, there will be iron overload. Autoimmune studies, ANA, ASMA are elevated in some patients. And uh, what is the gold standard to diagnose this? Liver biopsy. You got to take liver biopsy and see how the inflammation has affected the liver. And there is also the staging regarding uh, with, uh, in terms of using fibrosis. By the extent of fibrosis, you can stage NASH. And finally, the management. In the management, you need to think about the causes. If you can treat the causes, that becomes the treatment of NASH. What are the main causes? Metabolic syndrome. What did we say? Drop, dyslipidemia, insulin resistance, obesity, and hypertension. So dyslipidemia, treat abnormal lipids, use anti-lipemic agents. Then insulin resistance, use drugs that sensitize the body for the action of insulin, like metformin or thiazolidine diens, TZDs like rosiglitazone or pioglitazone. Then obesity, how do you treat obesity? Encourage patient to do dieting or do more exercise. Or on the other hand, bariatric surgery to remove those excessive fats from the body. And finally, pressure, hypertension, treat hypertension, use diuretics or other anti-hypertensive agents to treat these patients. And also, what is the most common cause? Metabolic syndrome, which, which is directly related to the fats, so increase anti-lipemic agents. Start with the semvastatins, statins. Statins, you say, they not only decrease the level of lipids in our body, they also act as anti-inflammatory agents. Because they act as anti-inflammatory agents, in fact, they are actually treating atherosclerosis in the arterial wall. Because they treat arterial wall atherosclerosis, they are reducing the cardiac mortality. So all of these agents, they play a definite role in a NASH, that is non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. Hope you remember and you are always welcome to post your comments if you find more important points so others can read and learn. And uh, when you have time, visit our website at www.usmlevideos.net. That is www.usmlevideos.net. Thank you. Have a nice day.